Hello everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Maze, and in this video, I'm going to be finally finishing up the Picture Frame Earn 2.0. It's been done for a while, but I'm barely getting around to editing the video. And I am sorry it took so long, but I've been kind of busy, and then I got distracted by the lathe. Uh, anyways, we left off having made the repository and the frame. So in this part, we'll be working on the fun part of the build, which is the customization. The part of the build which makes this go from an ordinary box, or in this case, urn, to something unique and with some character. So with that out of the way, let's make some dust. The first thing I needed to do was to work on the columns. So I cut off a nice chunk of cherry and headed over to the table saw to rip it. So I need these to be square, so I use the thickness of the wood to set my fence and rip off some square pieces. Then I cut out a rebate that was half the thickness of the piece from both sides, that way it could look like the column was wrapped around the corner. So at this time I didn't have my lathe yet, so in order to round off the columns, I first used my trim router and a 45 degree bit to route off as much of the corner as I could and then use the belt sander for the rest. Now this is not an ideal way to do this and they are by no means perfectly circular <laughs> nor the same radius really. But they do look good on the piece and I found making the ends a circle first and then connecting the two circles with long passes work the best. Then I cut them in half and set them aside. I don't know how long they need to be yet, so I just left them as long as I could, which is well proud of where they'll need to be. So in order to know how long the columns needed to be, I needed to work on what I called the capital and the base, which are basically reflections of each other. So I had to make two of the same thing, which are essentially like making two picture frames really. So once I milled out the wood, I routed out a quarter inch rebate on one side and a Roman OG profile on the other. And then I planed it down until it looked nice and had an even profile. I think it ended up between 5 eighths and a half an inch. It didn't really matter, it just was until it looked good. Now the router bit needs some wood for the bearing to ride along, so I kept it thick, but then once I had routed it, the profile into the piece I didn't need all that extra wood so then I could plane it down until it looked good to my eye and give it a nice lean look. Then it was basically like making a picture frame. I decided to do my miters out of by hand out of respect. Um, I go more into why I like to do some things by hand when I make urns in the last video so check that out if you're curious. And once my miters are done, I can glue up the base and the capital. And they're both exactly the same, so I only showed the one. And now with those in place, I can measure how long the columns need to be. But a little trick for cutting inside dimensions like this, where you can see your ruler or tape measure won't fit, is to take two pieces of wood, smaller than the dimension obviously, and extend them out until they span that dimension. Then you could use them to set a stock block or measure them with the ruler. So using that dimension, I set my stop block and cut the columns on the miter saw. So the last decorative part was the dome looking thing on top. And so I cut out a piece for that and cleaned it up on the table saw. And I also needed to make basically another frame uh, to act as the foundation of the whole thing. So I also cut off the pieces I would need for that. Now the celebration of life party that they wanted to have got moved up a week due to some scheduling conflict. So I found out at this point I only had a few days to finish it. So I had to uh, forego the hand cutting of the miters and just use the miter saw for this one. So I cut the foundation to size and glued it up. Then for the quote unquote 
dome part of the roof I went over to the scroll saw and cut out what I thought was a nice pattern and as you can see I'm pretty much maxing out what my scroll saw can handle a bandsaw would have been more ideal but alas a bandsaw I do not have so I had a lot of cleanup work to do on the old sanders because it was not a great cut let me tell you but anyways once that was done I put a heavy chamfer on the edge I basically maxed out the bit and that was pretty much all of the building of it done So then I gave everything one last sanding all the way up through the grits up to 320 I believe and then it was time for the glue up. Now the glue up was done in stages. First I glued the base to the foundation and I had center lines to go by but even still it's kind of easy even after clamp for the wood to slip and move so it's a matter of checking and double checking. And then I glued the dome to the capital, again making sure that my center lines matched up. Then once those were dry, I could glue the repository into the bottom and using tape as my clamps glue the columns onto the corners. And then glued the top onto the repository. And I wrote my name and the date and a little scripture on the bottom of the dome uh, no one will ever be able to read it unless this joint fails, but we'll know it's there. And I like to do that on a lot of my pieces if I get a chance, so shh, don't tell nobody. And then I put some boiled linseed oil on it to give it a nice color. And off camera, put on about three coats of shellac. Then the last thing I needed to do was make a bottom panel. Now this will screw onto the bottom of the repository with some brass screws to hold the ashes in the repository and the picture in its frame. And it's done. And it was done on time so he was able to attend his own celebration of life and he stayed right by the food just like he was known to do while alive. and that's the video so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video if you would hit the like button i would appreciate the support and if you hadn't already seen the other two videos in this series check out the playlist at the end of the video and stay tuned for the making dust episode for this build where i'll take all the parts in this series condense them down and put them into one video without commentary so if you're interested in that be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss it. Other than that, as always, support your local craftsmen or get out in your workshops and make your own dust. And together, we can make making great again.